you beautiful Spark and welcome back to another solo episode of Spark TV. I am Danielle, your humble guide in this journey of business. Uh, so welcome back. Today I am talking about something that has been on my mind. I wanted to say bothering me, but that could be a little bit harsh. But I've just noticed lately that uh, in a lot of our networking calls for the Spark membership, we are very much talking about the economy, <laughs> uh, the cost of living crisis, how sales are slow, how business is hard, all of these things. And I have been reflecting on that and look, couldn't agree more. It has definitely been a bit of an odd start to the year. But I mean, I say that off the back of an odd few years during COVID and, you know, odd however many years in business that were always hard. So, you know, things are always a little bit hard <laughs> in business, if we're being honest. But I think the thing that's been bothering me is that we are showing up discussing the problem. And as a business owner, that doesn't really help me. So yes, I, I don't mind a little bit of acknowledgement that perhaps, you know, there are external forces to our business right now uh, that we can't control. But, you know, I can't go to my landlord <laughs> and say, I'm, I apologize, there's a cost of living crisis, so you'll just have to wait on rent. You can't do that to any of your suppliers, right? So showing up, talking about the problem, yes, is great. It helps us understand that we're not alone. But I don't think it's being particularly helpful in what to do next and how to solve the problem. So I've been really, you know, internally reflecting on the conversation perhaps that I think we need to have, which is, okay, cool, what is working right now? So I have collected a few things that are working for me in business right now, and I want to share them with you. Uh, but I would also say if you are a woman in business who has something that's working right now, don't gatekeep, you know, where there, there are enough customers on the planet for us all. So sharing what's working with you is not going to decrease your business. Uh, think abundantly. If there is something working for you, no gatekeeping. I would love for you to share it with our community. Comment on this video if you're watching it on YouTube. I think Spotify has this little Q&A thing, comment thing now. Who knows how podcasts work? So comment there. Uh, jump onto our Instagram. I've actually put up today. Uh, so whenever you're listening to this, it will be there. I've put up a quote tile basically saying that what is working for people in business right now. So I would absolutely love to hear from you um, so that we can share the love. So we can try new things and experiment uh, and all win together. But let me share what I'm doing with you just in case it does help you on your journey in business. So the other thing I will be, say before I get started is that perhaps this is just a season. So we talk a lot about seasons in our life and in business. And sometimes we are, you know, sometimes, you know, we have kids, right? Um, sometimes we are renovating a house. Sometimes we are being a caregiver for someone in our family and things ebb and flow depending on what's going on in our business and our life. And so we have to adjust what we do, how we show up, um, how much work in air quotes for people listening, uh, we can actually do. So the other thing I will say is that I do think this is just a season as well. So if perhaps you do have to pivot, if you do perhaps have to try new things or change what you're doing to reach more customers, um, I would say that hopefully this is just a season and we'll come out the other side and be better off for it. But if you fall in the camp like me and you are not going to decrease your revenue, you are going to try new things. And here's a few things that I'm doing right now that are working inside my business. And the first one is more, which I know not everyone likes to hear. I know, you know, we've gone through a bit of a phase in uh, online business communities, especially talking about balance, talking about uh, 
monitoring, uh, relaxing our nervous system, whatever that rhetoric is, you know, more joy. And don't get me wrong, I want all of those things in my life. However, financial stress can lead to more disrupted nervous systems, no joy, all of those things. So in my mind, having to work a little bit harder, do a little bit more, I'm totally okay with because I know the offset of maintaining revenue or increasing revenue um, at this time in business is certainly a lot more helpful than still getting my relaxed time, sitting in front of the TV with a glass of wine, watching Netflix, but being totally fucking stressed the entire time. So I'm going through a season of more. And one of those mores that I'm doing is more proactive outreach. Yes, <laughs> you guys know that I'm such a cold outreach person. Um, but now for me, it's a non-negotiable. So Cold email outreach and cold LinkedIn outreach are the two things that I'm doing and I am doing it daily and my virtual assistant is also doing it daily. So personally, I am sending 50 cold outreach emails every day and my virtual assistant is sending 50 cold outreach emails every day. Uh, and then my VA is also maxing out my LinkedIn connection requests every week. And then I circle in if anyone accepts the connection request or replies, I circle in and pick up the conversation. So right now, more proactive outreach is an absolute non-negotiable for me and my business. So I would say to you, um, perhaps reflect on how much outreach you're currently doing. So are you doing daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly outreach? Are you just doing it when you um, need to, when their sales are a little slow? Or are you not doing it at all? <laughs> Either way, no judgment. There is no judgment here. This is a safe place. Um, but I would say if you are unhappy with uh, the current pipeline or the current trajectory of revenue in your business, that perhaps you can look at ramping up your proactive sales outreach. That is number one. Uh, and look, all of these tips I'm going to give you today as well low to no cost. So I'm not going to say spend $10,000 on ads or spend, you know, $10,000 on an influencer or anything like that. I wanted to give you practical free-ish tips that you can do like right now. Like right now, there would be nothing stopping you sitting down and sending 50 emails to your dream clients. It doesn't cost anything, right? It costs time. And we may have to invest a little bit more time in this season of business. Um, number two tip is collaborate with other businesses. I love this one so much. Um, now, by the time you're listening to this, there may only be a few days left on this offer, um, but this is just an example of me taking my own advice. So uh, One Roof Women and Spark Business have teamed up to offer two-for-one memberships. So this is literally the cheapest you'll ever get our women in business memberships. So both memberships for a year is only 500 bucks. Um, but as a result, both of us have been promoting each other to our networks. So sending emails to our lists, doing Instagram lives. We both ran a masterclass for each of our membership communities. None of those things cost money but it meant that each of our communities got introduced to each other. So what I'd love for you to do is think about what businesses you could actually collaborate with. Who has your target audience? Who has your target customer, but has a non-competitive product? I mean, and I, if you're listening and you're like, well, your two women in business membership communities aren't new competitive products, a little bit different because no, we're not. So we do believe in collaboration and I personally am a part of like three or four different women in business membership groups because they all bring something different to the table. So because we uh, do have different members, we do have different inclusions, it is actually a complimentary service. So think about who as a complimentary product or service to you that you can team up with and start promoting each other and adding value to each other's networks. That is totally free, right? Um, and you have built up value. You've built up an audience. You've built up skills. You've built up products. So the collaboration can look, you know, maybe it's just an Instagram post. Um, maybe it's hosting a masterclass. Maybe it's collaborating on a specific product or um, bulk offering your services. 
whatever it is, you know, reach out to somebody that you think might be interested in collaborating with you. If you're not sure where to start, our Women in Business directory is totally free. Jump onto the sparkbusiness.global website, go to the Women in Business directory and just browse awesome women in business. They are all in that directory because they want to be found. They want to grow. They want to team up with other amazing businesses. So if you're not sure where to start, start there. Number three, the number three thing that I'm doing right now in this season of weirdness <laughs> is rethinking my messaging. So, and this is something that I would say to you, if you have a website, um, proposal documents, brochures, uh, email scripts, whatever it is, perhaps you've had them sitting there for quite a long time, um, however many years collecting dust and they've been working. So, you know, you focus on doing the other things in business. Why focus on changing things? Um, now <laughs> that things aren't working, perhaps it's time to rethink your messaging. Now, the best way to do this is to actually talk to your customers. So customers that have purchased from you, ask them why. Customers that have not purchased from you, ask them why. What you want to do is listen for that language. Listen to the words they're saying and how they articulate the problem that you solve or the problem that they think they have. Use that messaging in your copy, in all of your touch points, so website, proposal, emails, whatever it is, so that you do actually connect better with the person you're trying to sell. That is my top tip there. But perhaps it's time to rethink your messaging. And perhaps if times are a little bit slower, we've got a little bit of extra spare time, might not be a bad approach. Number four is retention, retention, retention. So at this time, it has never been more critical than to focus on the customers you do actually have. So if you have customers, if you have existing customers, you want to make sure they are so happy. You want to make sure you are delivering on everything that you said that you would deliver on. And here's why. Firstly, because it costs a lot more money to acquire a new customer than it does to retain an old one. So we want to keep our foundation strong. The second and third thing, second thing is that you can upsell to them. If they love you and you're happy and they're happy with the work that you're delivering, why not sell them something else? So what is the next step that you can think about to support them in their life or business, depending on what products or service you have? And if they're not ready to buy more from you, get a testimonial. Again, if they're happy, why wouldn't they give you that testimonial or referral? And then you can use that to sell and make it easier to sell into the new potential customers. So yeah, absolutely right now, leverage your base, either sell into them or get testimonials from them. But whatever you do, make sure they are bloody happy because we don't want them to go anywhere. Actually, my favorite stat, which I'm going to read off the screen because I can never remember it, but there is a 60 to 70% chance of selling to an existing customer where, the, where comparatively to a new customer, only 5 to 20%. So making sure we actually deliver on our customers when we've sold them something so that we, they can be future, future potential purchases is so, so critical and so important for our bottom line. Okay, the last one I want to leave you with today is simply to make more offers. And that is uh, just think about the last time you told somebody what you did. <laughs> now, if you can't remember when you told someone what you did, we have a problem. We have a big problem. You kind of want to be showing up talking about your products and services every day. And you don't have to do it in a salesy way. I know, I know not everyone loves sales, right? And I know as a salesperson, um, I tend to tell people to sell, <laughs> but it's so important. If people don't know what you do and how they can work with you, then you are literally just showing up on the internet, providing free education. So show up on your Instagram stories and talk about a customer success story and just remind people how they can work with you. Make sure the ways that people can work with you are in your email signature. So anytime you're sending an email, you're making an offer. You know, send an email to your list. When was the last time you sent an email to your list? <laughs> uh, 
Um, you know, if you run a podcast, make sure you remind people what it is that you do. Go and follow up every proposal that you have sent in the last 12 months, whether they have not got back to you or they've been thinking about things. You know, if you are in any business memberships, make the most of them. You know, Spark, as part of the Spark membership, you get access to so much promo, like a podcast episode, a news article, a women in business directory listing, social shout outs, so much stuff. Like this is what we're here for, right? To get you in front of more customers. So make sure that you are out there making offers. And when I say making offers, I mean just reminding people what it is you do and how they can work with you. It doesn't have to be hardcore selling. It just has to be showing up, reminding people how they can work with you. Now, These are things that we can do. We can all do these things today. They don't cost any money uh, or very little, if anything. They don't cost money so we can all show up and do this. But I want to share a final little trick with you because even though I have outlined five things that cost no money that you can do today, I still understand that the pressure that we are under as business owners right now is tremendous. And one thing I've learned over the last 12 years in business is that you can feel scared. You can feel overwhelmed. You can feel like your business is on fire and you want to quit and still send the email. So that is something that I remind myself of when I'm spiraling out of control I can, you know, not be, not get out of my pajamas, not put makeup on. I can stay in bed under the covers with a coffee and I can just sit there and send the emails. I don't have to feel good and send the emails, but I can still move my business forward. Um, I hope you're okay. <laughs> I hope that your business is thriving. I hope that you, uh, yeah, I hope that some of these tips provide some inspiration and I really, really hope that you do take action. As always, if you need anything, you email me at danielle at sparkbusiness.global. And if no one else tells you today, you've got this.